In a world where PC parts are way too expensive and it's basically impossible to get a decent budget PC for 600 bucks, this thing right here is gonna save Christmas and is actually going to be the best thing you can buy in late 2025 and actually early 2026, okay? And it is easily replicable in every part of the world, except for the deal on the GPU, which you will have to adjust based on where you live. So with that said, let's get straight in the video and welcome back at the PS Series. Now this build right here is actually so good that basically every single component in it, I did a dedicated video for to document how good it was. I generally don't do that. If you follow the channel, you know, I just make a build video and cover everything, but this is insane. So to the heart of this build, there is a laptop CPU with a dual PCB converted desktop made from a strange factory over in China, where they basically take broken laptops or, or brand new chipsets and convert stuff. And it is the i9-1200HX, which you can currently buy on Aliexpress with coupons for just 130 bucks. 24 cores of locked CPU, which you can then unlock with a few tricks and actually run at full potential very close to the actual performance of an i9 from 12th gen. We are putting that on a Huanancy B760M D4B. And this is a 60 bucks motherboard, a 60 or 70 bucks motherboard, depending on which coupons you use, which is from Huanancy, a brand which we, we know on the channel. And if you follow other tech YouTubers which use Xeons and stuff, you've probably seen for a while. It is actually a very good motherboard with a great BIOS, but those motherboards always use the same BIOS. Plenty of features, 3-pin RGB connectors, dual NVMe support, and just two slots of RAM, which is better because it means better RAM overclocking. And in terms of RAM, this is the only thing which I'm not really covering. It's this Kimtigo RAM. This is great, but I got a deal which you probably won't be able to get on this one because I bought it on Amazon for 90 bucks, but now they are tricky to find. But I made a full video on how to buy RAM nowadays, and basically you can still find decent DDR4 RAM on the used market, or if you buy a slightly higher spec stuff. So I would suggest you do that for this build. Now to cool the CPU, I got a 15 bucks cooler, which is this one over here. It's the Metalfish ZH1400. Not much to say, if not that it cools very well and it's 15 bucks. And it also has a fake infinity mirror and fake RGB. I say fake because uh, the RGB is static, like it doesn't rotate, but whatever. Now, I put all that in the Mars Gaming MC SE2. Now, Mars Gaming is a European brand. So if you're from the States or somewhere else in the world, you're going to find it under another name because I think they import cases from China and they rebrand it. Just look for a micro ATX case for about 40 bucks with one included RGB fan. It's going to be the same one as this, okay? But if you're in Europe, best brand to buy it from is Mars Gaming, okay? And it's very good space shoes. You can add fans on the bottom if you get extra budget. Good I.O. ports on the front. Very easy to build in. Very cool, very small. We then got just a random used 20 bucks power supply. The, this one is a Cooler Master, 650 watts, 80 plus bronze modular. But literally all the power supplies people are throwing at you. But this one we had to wash uh, with the actual garden hose to, to make it uh, usable because it was very dusty. But hey, your automotive PS use, that's what you can expect. By the way, nowadays you can become a channel member if you want, and you could become a PSU washer is how I call the, the levels. But anyways, back on the actual build, I then got an RTX 4060, just a random MSI 2X. This one I got a very good deal on. I paid 150 bucks for, but you can probably get it for even cheaper if you buy a worse model, but I didn't want to buy a single fan pre-built model. And uh, guys, for the used market, the trick is to lowball people. I have a full guide on how to not get scammed when you're buying on the used market, but getting scammed aside, you should just offer people less and you're gonna buy it if, if your price actually makes sense. Don't offer like unreasonably low, just know what uh, the low end of the market is and offer in that range. And this guys, this is how the build came out. Now you're seeing it here, okay, it's compact, it's pretty. But how does it perform? Well, I'm glad you asked. So first of all, take a look at the synthetic Firestrike score because this thing is a pretty strong performer. Check out the physics score, okay? The CPU is carrying this one heavy, but it was so cheap, there was no reason to buy less cores. You could actually get a slightly faster CPU by buying the 13th gen variant of these notebook CPUs, Serial Express, and I think that's actually 
10, 15 bucks even cheaper, so you could save some money there. This thing is insane. Numbers you're seeing are with the PC at stock. Overclocked, you can get about 30% more performance between the CPU and the GPU, which is absolutely crazy. Now, I'll also have you take a quick look at the CPU Z score just to show you. We're running the RAM at 3200 MHz. Of course, get DDR4. Getting DDR4 is the key to saving money nowadays. But the thing is, since it's DDR4, you can push it so much with the better IMC in a 12th gen CPU compared to previous generations, since it also supports DDR5. And that's the trick that actually allows you to overclock better. But still, at stock, they're pretty far away from an i9-2900K, of course. But in gaming, things don't quite matter. So here's the stock footage. And stock, you can see, we are oscillating between 270 FPS about in Apex Legends competitive mode in just a random battle royale mode. But with the overclock, we are able to lock out 300 FPS. Now, they're not super stable, okay? Let's not kid ourselves, but it's pretty decent performance still. So we can't really complain about that. Now, Warzone, I actually had some issues recording because now you need secure boot enabled and I recorded via external drive. But anyways, in Warzone, you can do basically the same as Apex. I don't know how, but these two games have basically leveled themselves if you have a strong enough CPU. Warzone is a little bit more heavy on the CPU, but basically 240 FPS is your target at stock. Overclocked, about 270 FPS is what you're gonna be able to do. So I'd say this build would be perfect for a 240 Hertz monitor to play any title on, but you could also play 1440p if you want, because the 4060 is decent in upscaling. And incredibly enough, this would be a very good workstation machine. 24 cores would literally destroy any kind of editing footage or graphic work. This thing is very fast for productivity. So with that said, I will leave the full part list down in the description so you guys can go ahead and copy it if you want. There are a few things which you need to find on the used market, but overall this is very easy to replicate. With that said, if you guys think I could have made this any better, please drop a comment down below. I know for a fact I could have gotten a better GPU in it, but I did want to keep it on a budget and also leave room for expandability. But let me know your thoughts on that as well. And if you watched the video this far, maybe drop a like and subscribe. And see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.